Hey guys, so I just finished watching Insidious Chapter 4, The Last Key, starring Lynn Shea, Lee Winnell, Angus Sampson, Kirk Acevedo, Caitlin Gerard, Spencer Locke, Josh Stewart, Tessa Ferrer, Alik Reed, and directed by Adam Robitel. Now this is the fourth one in the series, uh, starting way back in 2010 with Patrick Wilson and Rose Byrne. Um, that one was about the story of their child who was essentially put into a coma for most of the movie while a demon was trying to access his soul to gain a portal into the real world. So it was essentially the story of a haunted child. And Lin Shay plays a character called Alice Rayner, who is a medium who can come along and, you know, save people from supernatural distress. <laughs> Played by the wonderful Lin Shay. I first discovered Lin Shay back in 1984 in a little film called A Nightmare on Elm Street. She just had a small part as a teacher, but I'd seen A Nightmare on Elm Street so many times that I became very familiar with her character and I kind of like became very familiar with the actress. So whenever she turned up in movies that I enjoyed watching, I was always happy to see her. And here she has her own franchise, a supernatural film series about a place called The Further, which is basically purgatory, which she has got access to with her supernatural abilities. And she's kind of like a ghost hunter or a demon fighter where she comes along and she helps people who are having poltergeist and demonic activity. People who need help with matters that can't be explained, come to me. These hauntings can be terrifying things. I should know. I have faced many evils in my life. With the help of her trusty sidekicks, Spex and Tucker, Spex played by Lee Winnell, who also writes these movies. James Wan directed the first Insidious movie and Lee Winnell has written most of them. Those two collaborated early on in their careers and created the Saw franchise. So that's pretty cool. The Saw franchise is a guilty pleasure of mine. I really love going back to those movies. The silly, gory fun, but I enjoy them. And James Wan and Lee Winnell being Aussies is just awesome. And also Angus Sampson as Tucker, another Aussie actor. Love seeing his work too. He's always fantastic. The Haunted House. Is my family's house. So, the first two Insidious movies, part one and part two, are basically the story of Patrick Wilson and his family needing Elise and her psychic sidekicks help to kind of get rid of a demon that, that has kind of been plaguing Elise's life for a long time. Um, spoiler alert. If you, see, if you haven't seen those movies yet, I do recommend you take them out, but spoiler alert, right? Elise gets killed in the first movie um, and then kind of turns up as a ghost in the second one. So part one and part two are sequels to each other, but part three and part four are now prequels where we're telling the, the backstory of Elise and getting a little bit more about her character. So the inherent problem with the prequel, though, is that the lead character, who you know is going to go into other movies, there's no tension. We know this person is going to be okay. So all through this movie, no matter what happened to Elise, no matter, no matter what kind of scary situation she got herself into, I wasn't in fear of, for her life. She was going to be fine. And also with Tucker and Specs, like there's scenes where we think they're going to get hurt or killed. <laughs> you, just, you just know it's not going to happen because they're in the next, or they're in the original two movies. So... Anyway, movie in itself is, um, actually this one is running out of steam a little bit. Uh, Lee Winnell is a fantastic writer. I, I love his movies. And this has also been produced by James Wan, who I just adore. But the movie franchise is starting to get a little tired by this point. It's number four. The conceit of the movie has been done to death. And like I said, with the fact that it's a prequel, there's no real tension. So the movie is chock full of jump scares. I will give it that. There's nothing like a good jump scare to kind of get the heart going. If we can find out what it is, we can stop this curse. 
a jump scare does not make a scary movie. Sure, they, they're fun and you have a laugh, but it's not really what makes a suspenseful movie suspenseful. It, it is a tension relief, but it's not really horrific. So, unfortunately, this movie kind of did fall flat and I found the ending to be kind of very anticlimactic as well. It's good to see Spencer Locke again. She is in another Guilty Pleasure franchise of mine, uh, Resident Evil, where she plays came out uh the girl doesn't age she looks the same as she did in resident evil 3 which was made about 10 10 years ago um but yeah so the movie it was okay but i think they should kind of end it now the it looks like this movie the ending is kind of leading into the original first movie so um there's really nowhere else to go so it looks like it's gone full circle and that's fine. It's not a great movie, but end it now and you'll have a pretty good run of uh, Insidious movies. I'd give it a 6 out of 10 only because the jump scares are fine, but it doesn't really make a, a scary movie. The performances are fine. I love Lin Shay, but the ending just kind of really fell flat and that kind of did bring the whole movie to a, a screeching halt for me. I just didn't really find myself enjoying it. Like, it was okay, but then, yeah, it's just it's just done. It really is quite tired now, so just you can just stop. Oh, the demon was cool. The demon makeup was pretty cool. It's a demon monster with keys on the ends of his fingers. It's, it's massive Freddy Krueger ripoff, but the demon effects did look cool. And one thing I do not like about horror movies, I mean... Being shackled by PG-13 rating, you're not going to get a lot of gore. There was one F-bomb and yeah, it's just kind of shackled by this determination by the studios to kind of get as big an audience as possible. And I know that's, you know, that's business. You want to get your consumer base. You want to get as much money as you can. But these kind of movies, having that PG-13 rating on there just kind of really, you know, it doesn't do it any favours at all. But anyway, that's my review on Insidious Chapter 4, The Last Key. Don't forget to subscribe, throw me a thumbs up, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.